When troubleshooting your first computer, you're going to run into a lot of possible potential scenarios, or maybe none at all. It depends. I can't speak to every scenario how to fix it necessarily, although if you have a question about anything, let me know in the comments and I'll see if I happen to have an answer, happen to know anything about it. But in this series, I'm going to be troubleshooting my first computer, fixing a couple of problems that we ran into, and hopefully it'll be helpful to some of you guys. So... So you just built a computer and you think, wait, I want to rotate the CPU cooler around because I put it on the wrong way. Bah! Okay, well, here's a video for you. So we've got the CPU cooler down here, the, the fan thing, and the CPU is underneath. Obviously, that's where it goes. Now, we have the problem here. Um, we put it on and we noticed that... Over here, if you can sort of see that in the, the recording, I'm not sure if you can see that, but it is overhanging the memory slots down there. And so we can't put memory in every uh, every memory channel. So I'm going to attempt to rotate it around. Now, I was talking to Brian, and if you guys don't know who he is, he was in the PC build videos, which is basically how to not break your first computer build. Um, demonstrating how to uh, how to not break it because he knows a lot about computers. He's built, I think he said, about 30 or 40 computers, um, which is a lot of computers. And I was talking to him about rotating the CPU cooler and reapplying thermal paste because that is um, thermal paste. For those of you guys who don't know, basically you have your um, your CPU, which is a try to this screwdriver is falling over. Um, you have your CPU here, um, this way, which is there, and it's metal on top. So you apply, you have your um, your cooler over here, and they contact, but not too good. Thermal paste is like a, a paste that goes in between that conducts heat very well. So the um, this cooler that I got came pre-applied with thermal paste, but apparently often you have to replace your uh, your own thermal paste and so I was asking him about will turning this around mess with any of that and I think if I understood him right and if I remember right what he said of course um, basically I shouldn't have to reapply the thermal paste right now because the computer hasn't really done anything so once it's produced a lot of heat and the paste has kind of been affected by the heat and and things like that, then you start to run into more issues and uh, in terms of the thermal paste might not be applied quite right or something um, if you just take the cooler straight off and rotate it and turn it and put it back down. Um, so you might need to actually reapply the paste. But without that, it should, since this one hasn't really done anything yet, uh, it hasn't actually done much of anything. It just sort of waited for 10 seconds and then restarted um come on last screw can't the the thing just uh moved a little bit by the way this uh this cooler is attached to a metal plate underneath and the metal plate likes to fall down um because it's simply attached by the screws that screw this thing in so when you unscrew this the plate falls off um and so that has a lot to do with why the, the cooler sprung into the this side and stuff like that. Anyways, back to the point. Um, yeah, so thermal paste should be okay if the computer hasn't really done any, any uh, heat much. And so we shall find out. We shall find out how it goes. Um, oh, okay, this thing is loose now. So that is good. Let's go ahead and lift this up and unplug it from over here uh, how do you is it is there a lock on the plug no there isn't okay let's see it looks like let's grab the grab the other camera so that you can see it more clearly and then we'll talk a little bit more about thermal paste in a second so here we go so as you can hopefully see on the back of this thing there's the Focus, please. There's the metal fins, and then that is covered in thermal paste. You can sort of see that the metal fins are 
are showing through a little bit, which they weren't when we first got it. I don't think they were anyways. Um, so the thermal paste has come off a little bit, but it still appears to be fairly even, and it's come off onto here. If you see if it will focus. Wow, okay. Um, I think it's because of its glowing. Let me stop this camera for a minute, and let me uh, turn off the flash. Turn it back on. Hopefully you can see that. Okay, so you can sort of see it says Ryzen. That's the Ryzen processor, by the way. And it is all dirty looking because it doesn't actually look very dirty in real life. Uh, it, it more on the camera, but it looks very, um, very covered in uh, in thermal paste a little bit. It's like sort of half on the processor and half on the cooler. So this is the cooler. It's got the fins and the fan and the functionality facilitator on the other side, which is the plug. It, it allows um, power to get through. Now, you can see it has this piece, the um, AMD symbol sticks out, which has to go not next to the, mother the memory ports. It has to go on this side of the thing. So that is why we're turning it around. So it goes on like that. Um, but before putting it on, Let's take a look underneath, and everything should be secured for, for tilting this up because the motherboard is now screwed into place. So this thing, if you can see this, this is the plate that I was talking about. So basically, this is a metal plate on this side and a whatever that is on the other side. Um, looks like just a little spongy thing so that it can go on the, mother on the motherboard without breaking any, uh, without uh, scratching it too much. But in any case, this thing, it just has, like, standoffs there. I think that's what they're called, standoffs. And they go through and connect to the screws on the other side. So that is all there is to it. Let's see if we can, uh, if we can actually see the back of the motherboard on camera. That would be very good. That would be very good. Okay, let's go ahead and do that. And turn on the flash this time. Come on. Flash, there we go. And... There we go. So you can see that is the back of the case. That is where the plate goes between those um, four screw holes like that. And those appear to be some uh, some electronic components. Like I think they're resistors, things like that. Oh, and those are even smaller resistors there. Okay, that is crazy small. Anyways, that is that. So now to go ahead and using only two hands only two hands we're gonna try to uh try to hold the plate in place while screwing in the cooler on top it is not going to be easy but it is going to be done if you are trying to um, do this yourself and you're finding it is very difficult then it's probably because it is very difficult. So, let's see. Okay, so let's put it on this way. This is the way it's supposed to go. The, th the paste, as I was saying, appears to be fairly evenly distributed across it still, which is good. So hopefully that will not be a problem. Um, I think it's in place, not quite. Uh, trying to move it over a little bit until it lines up just right with the screw holes underneath. Okay, I think that's that. Now, here comes the hard part, is uh, trying to hold the plate underneath. Let's get it in the right place first. There we go. Hold the plate underneath. Thankfully, the plate has those standoffs that stick up, which go through the motherboard, and so it kind of holds it in uh, in place so it doesn't, like, move around. So that's good. So now we can move the cooler into place. Whoops, sorry, rubbing the microphone. Um, we can move the cooler into place. Okay, there we go. The screws go on top of the standoffs. And that's actually fairly easy. It is actually fairly easy to do, relatively speaking, of course. So, now let's go ahead and do this. If you can hear the, uh, whoa, don't scratch the board. Okay, if you can do, uh, hear the 
creaking or um, crunching sound or whatever it is, it's because there's springs. If you sort of saw that in the, the clip before, there's springs on these screws, which mean that the screws are rubbing against the springs. So that's what that sound is. So, and it doesn't appear to be happening. It doesn't appear to be happening right now. So that's good. Anyways, I was talking about thermal paste. Apparently there are two different kinds of thermal paste, probably more, I don't know much about it, but there's at least two different kinds that um, if I understood what Brian was saying properly and uh, if if I remember as well properly, of course, basically the kind of thermal thermal paste that tends to come in prepackaged things such as this um, a cooler, which I forget the name of, and uh, if I think of it, it'll be on the screen. But in any case, comes prepackaged with thermal paste is normally of the kind that does a pretty good job at um does uh, definitely a sufficient job at cooling but it um it will last without needing to reapply a paste it will last for maybe five years i think it was um something like that whereas if you get thermal paste that's one of these super uh, super heat conductive pastes that you can buy to be all like fancy and stuff and keep your computer extra extra cool which for uh, for depending on the computer is i guess it's probably not necessary but some computers would need it but one of those super duper pastes that are super thermal conductive need to be reapplied every what was it one two three years something like that whereas this prepackaged stuff should last for five years give or take of course so that's that's good. So that means that we shouldn't have to be doing this too often. Shouldn't have to be reapplying the paste too often. And it looks like the paste would have distributed evenly after uh, after redoing this. Although there's no way to tell for sure um, to see. I did slide the fan around a little bit trying to get the screws in the right place. But I think that should be fine. Okay, so it is now anchored onto the board. I'm just, uh, so the uh, the back plate will not fall down. So I'm just trying to, uh, to do the diagonals, one there, one there, one there, one there, to sort of uh, screw it down more evenly. And it, it appears to be nicely, nicely screwed in. Okay, trying to turn the screwdriver fairly tough sometimes to hold on to the thing. Oh, this one is loose. This one is very much loose. This one is very much loose. Okay, there we go. Get it a little bit farther. There we go. Okay, that appears to be on good. And this plastic case appears to have its own little bit that it moves. So that is okay. So that is the cooler. Oh, not quite. That is the cooler turned around. However, this wire is the last, um, the functionality facilitator with the fan and the fins and the functionality facilitator needs to be put in place. So let's go ahead and send it through underneath here. And oh dear, which one did it, which one did it come from? It has four plugs. Oh, and it has some writing on it. This one says arrow. This one says two five one zero and this one says e c i 26 okay so i guess those don't tell me which way it's supposed to go okay where did this fan thing go that is the question and oh fan um oh cpu fan two oh cpu fan one okay oh and it looks like there's a little plastic piece that sticks up in between these two uh two spikes on the plug there i don't know if you can see that or if you can uh, see that or not if you would like to see that let me know i may or may not be able to uh to unplug this again sometime to uh to demonstrate it really depends i don't know but the the plug will only go down in one direction so that is now down and in place 
So the plug is now in place, and the fan is uh, is now screwed in successfully. So there we go. So that is turning the CPU fan around, done successfully, I think. Of course, the, uh, the ultimate test is when we actually power it up to see. But speaking of powering it up, if you would like to see troubleshooting the, uh, the computer, then I'll hopefully be recording a video about that. It may be more, um, more edited than these ones. So if you guys want to see some other stuff about how to build the uh, computer, if you want to see how to not break your first computer build, go ahead and check out those uh, videos. I think that's going to be the title, something like that. And if you want to see reseeding the motherboard as well, go ahead and check out that one as well. And if you have any questions about anything uh, for either me or for Brian, uh, then ask. Let me know, and I can try to. Uh, I'll try to ask Brian things that are questions for him, and I can answer whatever I know because I have done a little bit of research as well. Well, a lot of research, but only for like a couple months. Where he's done it for like a couple, uh, a long time, <laughs> more than a couple years by a long shot. Anyways, this appears to be successfully in, and the fan is spinning, which is good. Well, manually spinning. The big test is when we turn it on. Turn it on. So, that is that, and hopefully you guys enjoyed the video, and see you guys later. Bye-bye.